Canine Foundation, and I have another um, video for you today through our Puppy 101 series. This is really important. There are other videos throughout our page that you can find where we reference this test and or demonstrate how to interpret dogs that we've tested and assessed and show you um, this particular test in action on some level. So I do encourage anyone who's particularly interested in this theme to do a search in our Facebook page or our YouTube channel for uh, temperament test, puppy training 101, some of those key phrases of, um, you know, puppy aptitude test or choosing the right puppy for you, puppy selection, any of those sort of keywords are going to be valuable in looking back on old content that we might have provided for you that would help you to understand how we get the information that we get about what a puppy needs in order to be most successful going forward in their life. When you go through the process of utilizing a, a medium like this, whether the Volhard test or something else, you get a lot of insight into your dog's temperament and disposition and how they're built from a genetic standpoint will influence the behavior that they give you as they grow and the behavior that you can influence as they grow based on how you control the environment. So. Um, I gave you the source for this particular test. We really like to um, you know, go to the Volhard test for puppies, preferably at seven weeks of age. I believe it specifies 49 days. This time, we're gonna show you the test on a puppy that is probably about age nine weeks, but we don't have any um, you know, verified, 100% accurate information about the, the litter that came in. So it'll be a little bit late, but as the test will tell you, I believe it is back here somewhere. Um, after choosing a breeder, it gets into uh, getting a dog from a shelter. And so as the document will tell you, don't overlook animals in the shelter as a source for good dogs. There's definitely secondhand dogs. And the same is true with running this test delayed. It's okay to run this test later. It's just gonna give you some slightly different information. And more importantly, the 49 day marker is about what's the best case scenario um, to do this at that, the, the test at that point in time based on development, because now you'll have information early enough to take action and make the changes or affect the behavior development um, you know, and, and temperament development that you want to, rather than being later down the line and running the test and potentially running into more fear periods or having limitations on how you shape the dog's behavior. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, Just to be clear, do not run all of these tests on a dog you do not know. Some of them are flipping them on the back. That is not something you would do with an adult shelter dog that you've never uh, correct. I'll get to that in just two seconds here. So that's okay. You're, you have a good point. So what she's, what Kai is commenting on here is the pieces of the test I was going to show you before we actually run them because I'm not going to do a lot of narration, if any, while the test is actually run. So the important notes is, as she indicated, there's 10 actual tests or little segments. Here's seven of them. And then I, I have the three on the second page. You don't run, as Kai is saying, you don't run all of these tests the same way on every dog at any age. It is very important that you understand that, you know, having that dog flipped over on their back for social dominance testing, for example, is not something we advocate you do outside these test parameters and a dog that say a three-year-old blue nose pit bull in your local humane society. Yeah. That ain't smart, is it? <laughs> Look at their faces. Don't do it. Just don't. So, and Elias is here, by the way. Yay! So, this is really important to respect that the test is designed for babies. That doesn't mean you can't apply the concepts to adult dogs, but you're too late in affecting certain changes or gathering certain pieces of information if you're not working on a young puppy, okay? So, that is a massive disclaimer. She's absolutely right. And it's that these, these things are to be done with puppies, 49 days of age, ideally. We're going to work a couple weeks later than that. It's fine. We're not in danger of getting bitten, having some of these issues that we might if we tried to do some of these restraints and things with a dog that is 
you know, massively fearful, has a bite history potentially, or is just too old to, you know, accept that kind of information. Um, how to test is broken down here. I'm not going to go through each point. I just wanted to show you this is comprehensive in its explanation. This entire packet is about 12 pages and it'll walk you through the fact that you need to put the puppy in a room that they're unfamiliar with. So a location they're unfamiliar with, but it does not mean they have to leave the house. 10 foot square area is adequate, a room where they haven't been yet. So we're gonna use our office. You test the puppies one at a time, you limit the people in the room to the people involved in the testing, um, and it has to be a tester, thanks to our buddy Elias, that the puppies haven't interacted with ideally. Um, they've never met this person, okay? Uh, they're tested before they're fed. They're tested when they're at their most energetic. And you're not testing a sick puppy, things like that. So make sure that you reference those details when you work through the packet. It'll tell you how to test. It'll explain each test segment, what kind of information are you trying to gather here. And then it'll give you the actual scoring sheet, okay? So the scoring sheet on each of the 10 segments has several options within it, and these can be hard to interpret. In some cases, you may get a little bit of a blurry option. You're not sure if you should go one way or the other. The test will tell you the first reaction of the dog is the one you score, and you're just gonna have to do the best you can to select the way the dog responded. So in the instance of elevation dominance, holding that puppy up high, does it struggle fiercely? Does it struggle fiercely and try to bite? Does it struggle, settle, then struggle and settle again? Is there no struggle and they are relaxed? Is there no struggle but they are stiff? And is there no struggle but they are very frozen? These numbers correspond to your ultimate score at the end. And when you have a cumulative result where the dog gets mostly one number or the other, which you'll see here, mostly twos, mostly threes, mostly fours, mostly ones, mostly fives, there's going to be information of a general reading on the dog's disposition and temperament based on mostly, okay? So we're gonna just run uh, NUX through this test and I'm gonna just uh, deal with the camera for you guys but not really in be involved uh, in saying much or handling much. He's outside still, right? <clears throat> And uh, Elias will be the handler, the neutral person the puppy hasn't had this interaction with before. And then Kai will score based on that list. So any questions, you guys, feel free to shout them out. I'll answer them for you. Uh, there's another video that you can absolutely access, like I said, very recently where Kai shared about um, her own dog Finn's results. What was it, fives or sixes? Okay, so he was mostly fives, and his only other score was sixes. And that video, you can search uh, for information. Like I said, look for you know keywords like temperament testing, puppy selection, puppy 101. Mostly fives, fearful, shy, needs special handling, will run away at the slightest stress. Strange people, places, different floor or ground. Hey, Bill. Um, surfaces may upset it. Often afraid of loud noises, terrified of thunderstorms. When you greet it upon return, it may submissively urinate. Needs a very special home where the environment doesn't change too much, where there's no children. Best for quiet elderly couple. If cornered and cannot get away, it might bite. And then it had some sixes. So independent, it doesn't need you or other people. Doesn't care if it's trained or not. He is his own person, unlikely to bond with you since he doesn't need you. A great guard dog for gas stations. And do not take this puppy and think you can change him into a lovable bundle. You can't, so leave well enough alone. This is accurate. So that's where he started, but because the test was done immediately upon bringing him home, and she immediately addressed and compensated for this disposition and the aspects of it that would not work for her lifestyle and goals or for his optimal health and uh, happiness long-term, Kai immediately started addressing those things and treating him as a fearful dog who needed to do a ton of scary things, right? Taking him everywhere, exposing him to loud noises, helping him to become stressed and recover from that stress, um, building confidence like crazy and dramatically intentionally moving towards building an adult dog that would not be limited by these scores, but that would be served by them, okay? 
So I just want to draw your attention here to the fact that when, you're, when you are responsible, when you have ownership of what's in front of you, when you're conscious and intentional and you say, okay, this is the dog I got, okay, maybe you didn't mean to choose that one, but this is the dog I got, and you start to work determining to do whatever you can to create an improvement, shift that result to what will serve, you can get great changes when you're early on in the game. It's a lot harder. Let me just flip you guys around so you don't have to look at papers forever. It's a lot harder when the dog is one years, two years, three years, 10 years down the line. You're much more limited on the changes that you can create, right? So <clears throat> at this stage, we've got brand new babies. They're, they're blank slates. They have tons of potential. We showed you Nux, the puppy we're using today. We showed you shaping, teaching place, all the ways in which he's going to have an amazing life because... The intention from the very beginning is to teach him how to be a great adult dog and pattern the behaviors and the skills and knowledge that he needs long term. And then in the assessment here of the temperament, it will give further insight into his areas of strength and weakness and it will change how the lifestyle should be structured for optimal development and balance. Okay, you guys all clear on that? Hopefully I'm not missing any comments because nothing's come through. I think maybe you just busy Friday and listening. Okay, let's go. Can we grab this little nugget and get her done? I'll take a little, say hi, wave. I know you guys can comment because Bill did. Why don't you go get in, Debbie? You know, just walk in and hey, thanks, Francis. Appreciate walk that. Down and walk out. So, hello, hello, hello. I'm going to just play around here on my best angle. Yeah, I think I'll. Elias is helping us out. Thanks, Sean. Yep, I think so. Mr. Church. Mr. Church. Yeah. So Elias doesn't live far away, and he happened to have a spare moment to pay us back for taking his insane Doberman Gideon out yesterday and goofing around. Um, here we go. She is here. Where the hell's the test? Okay, here it is. Hey. So, yep, yep, you just... Yep, okay. yep. Right. Um, You'll just have to speak up. Kneel and try to coax the puppy to you. No, 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 cat food. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up the ball. Wrong. Um, try to get the puppy to follow you in whatever way you can without grabbing. You'll hear after summer. stand and gently stroke him from head to back while you crouch beside it. See if he'll lick your face. One more time, what was that? So just stroke him gently from head to tail, so a full body stroke, and then see if he'll lick your face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
Isn't that interesting, guys, how predictable? Cradle the puppy with both hands, so you're going to hold him up and then flip him over on his back again, but elevated in the air. In the air? Yep. I mean, is there anything cuter than a, a man with a puppy on his back just flopped over like that? <laughs> All right, so you're going to crumple the rag up and toss it where he can see you throw it, so no more than four feet in front, and then try to encourage him to retrieve it and bring it back to you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that one more time so they can see. Okay, good. That's so easy to do when you meet a puppy, you guys. Squeeze between their toes. Um, awesome, Allie. Well, so we'll try to get him into the center and then um, you're going to drop the bowl on the edge of the room, so about five or six feet from the puppy. Where is he? Can't see because of you. There we go. I want to do that one one more time, Elias, since he's not paying attention to you. That'll give people another example. <laughs> now. Oops. That window is very... <laughs> Good. So what matters, guys, is whether the dog becomes terrified and avoids the object. You'll find... Good example. You'll find that when we go through the results, there's lots of different ways that the pup can respond to this with you know, confidence, security, fearfulness, um, suspicion. They might refuse to go back over close to something. Imagine all the adult dogs you know that are afraid of something, and the owner says, well, he just, he hates this or that. He's afraid of the blender. Is because there was fear and uncertainty, but nobody worked them through it to the other side, and the core temperament of the dog, the core disposition of the dog has inherent insecurity, right? So... It matters if you don't recognize that in your puppy and work at it, you build a dog into adulthood who is averse, avoidant, um, and as a result, extremely stressed and unhappy and hard to handle, hard to navigate, hard to care for. All these people who say my dog's petrified of fireworks or you know sirens or whatever, somebody's loud voice, you name it. It's like, dude, the work needs to be done to accommodate for that. It doesn't just fix itself or go away without intention. Um, Oops. There's a tripod right there between the desks. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead and just open one of those tripods. This dog is showing really nice, um, which is why he's in our program. Kai literally did these tests roughly when she met the entire litter at the other rescue, and it's why she brought them home. So this is a test right here in case you guys weren't hearing that.
but usually it's an umbrella. You're looking for how curious is he about the thing that's weird. Does he approach it? Does he consider it after being afraid, etc.? That's it. That's it. Okay. Grab your dog. <laughs> By the way, she's taking him home. Yay! Adopted. <laughs> okay. So thanks, guys. Let's talk about what you got because everybody wants to know. So she's gonna go through and find her mostlies, if you remember. She's gonna tally how many of whichever number and then she'll be able to tell you, I know, right, Meredith? She'll be able to tell you he got mostly threes, mostly fours, mostly twos, mostly fives. Um, thank you, Elias, that is awesome. You, I know, right? Per performing at a high level there as a behaviorist. Um, Let's talk about a couple things really quickly. If the puppy's already met someone um, that, that does the test, it's a false result because they're familiar, meaning they've gotten over potentially their nervousness of strangers. They've gotten over potentially any handling boundaries or barriers that that person has communicated um, you know, with uh, the dog before. And there's, there's too much comfort, familiarity. You're getting a false read on how the dog's stability might be. So it has to be someone that hasn't done these things, that hasn't interacted with the dog in this way before. And it has to be in a neutral environment because we change the environment for a dog and we often see their stress go up, right? This, is, this starts in the very beginning of their life based on their temperament and disposition, how flexible they are. So put them in a new environment. We see who's really under the hood, what is the core of this dog's process, and then how do they deal with a neutral person they've never met before, more information. So those things are really, really crucial. You don't wanna skimp on that, um, you know, and, and it tells you a lot, just this, a few of these components, even if you can't do the whole thing, okay? Um, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to what you found. So you got mostly threes, technically. So that, by the test, means can be a high-energy dog, may need lots of exercise, good with people and other animals, can be a bit of a handful to live with, needs training, does very well at it, and learns quickly. Great dog for second-time owner. What's interesting, if you actually look, like what I don't love about this is that it doesn't take into account where he got threes. Mm -hmm. What he got threes on is essentially attraction and... Um, um, like manipulability by humans. So he got threes on only half. It's just that the rest of them were not all also the same number. So he's still in mostly threes. Those are his actual scores. Um, so like Finn, for example, had, uh, one, two, three, he had eight fives and two sixes. So that is much more like mostly fives than category categorizing Nux as mostly threes. He's really only half threes. It's just that everything else is spread out, right? So um, if you're looking at drives, like this is essentially high pack drive and not a ton of dominance, but also not super submissive. That's what his mostly threes mean. If he had mostly threes on this half of the test, it would be a very different personality, even though you could still say he's mostly threes. Um, then you have drive over here, uh, mainly in the retrieving and the uh, sight sensitivity. Um, you've got a fair amount of prey drive. He's going to, you know, look, attack, bite the rag. He totally picked up the rag, but he didn't bring it back to the tester, which means he's slightly possessive. That doesn't mean he's gonna like kill you. <laughs> Just means as a natural thing, slightly possessive. If you're looking at like a bite work, personal protection dog, you want the dog to be massively possessive. So it's totally not a bad thing at all. And of course with training, you can counteract that if you want to. Um, then essentially touch sound, touch sound and stability are looking at, is he confident or insecure by nature? He's slightly insecure, but nothing like major there, you know, a five is different than a six. Um, and then the other two are twos, which just means he's somewhat interested in it. He didn't like completely run away from it. Um, that would be fours and fives, um, where a dog is like out of his mind, <coughs> scared of the bull dropping or the umbrella. So. Overall, very well-rounded dog, you know, tends to be a little bit insecure with new things, but recovered quickly. Mm -hmm. um, good with people, like probably always going to be really good with people. Also means you have some separation anxiety potential mm -hmm. because he wants to be with people. That's exactly that what we saw. Very much, yep. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then has a fair amount of, of prey drive. Is going to need some kind of outlet for that, um, you know, for a while. For but. biting and scratching. <laughs> <laughs> So the reason is new person, right, doesn't yeah. mean it translates, mm -hmm. but we practice that with all of the puppies because that is something that is super important to be right. able to handle. Francis, this form is printable online at the link I provided in the description. You do not have to buy it. It's available for free. Yes, is all of um, the information that you're sharing now, is that in the paperwork assessment-wise, or is this just... Because you what I just said it about is there. the trees, and that's my knowledge. Okay. That would not be found in what mm -mm. this says. Mm -hmm. um, you could maybe, like, if you kind of read, okay, well, you got a couple twos, what does that mean? Oh, I had leadership aspirations. It's like, no, that's not really what these twos are mean. You got a two in sound sensitivity, which means he's not, like, the most confident dog, but he's certainly not the least confident dog. Doesn't necessarily mean he has leadership aspirations. Where a two means leadership aspirations is the first half of the test, okay. right? Where he's biting more um, in the social interactions, he's getting underfoot, he's leading ahead of you, not just following behind you. Um, so, no, you can't really just go okay. go from that to that. Um, but you can look at what 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 I looked at is the literal the literal station, right? So a letter retrieving. So what did he get? What did he get? Not threes on. It was retrieving, right? So he retrieved the object, but he didn't return with it. He would go to the handler without it, or he would try to run away with it. That's where I'm saying he's a little bit possessive, okay. right? Yeah. So it's not that you have to like, um, no, like go to school for that or anything. It's so just looking at the literal test and like, what does that mean? Um, he got a five in touch sensitivity, which means he's relatively sensitive. It didn't take him long to start to protest the pressure on his paw. That was between the toes when he was yep. getting pinched. Yeah, so that just means he's a bit more sensitive to touch and he probably needs more handling practice. It doesn't mean that, you know, he's a scaredy cat, which is what Mostly Five says. See how okay. this is going in reverse, guys? Yep. Versus one to two down to six to eight, it's actually in reverse. So two in this case would mean he, he was fine a lot longer yeah. before responding. So like a service dog, you actually want ones and twos in touch sensitivity because you want them to be highly unsensitive to weird touching, especially if they need to do mobility work or something where they're taking someone's weight, mm -hmm. right? You want them to have a really high pain threshold, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, he has a relatively low one. He can be a little bit dramatic. Mm -hmm. like, that's really all it means. Okay. Um, sight sensitivity um, is the uh, touching the rag. That's the one that really throws me off with how they labeled it because it's really prey drive. What they're yeah, testing is pretty bad, it's not sight sensitivity. Um, and then what they call sight, sensi sight sensitivity, what I would call is the umbrella test, which they categorize as stability. It's just this weird thing happened near you, what do you do with it? And that's where he actually scored really well, looked, and, and kind of went to investigate and see it. That was, I kind of wrote like two or three. It was a little bit more cautious, so slightly insecure, but like nothing major. Um, sight sensitivity is prey drive, looked, attack, bit the object, he totally was playing thug, that's where it's like, he has prey drive, he is not, you know, a, a number one dog who is, desires to be a pack leader, not shy, maybe aggressive to people. Like, just because he got one number one there, doesn't mean he's going to turn to human aggressive when he gets older. Mm -hmm. So you really have to look at each, like what is each thing in terms of what the animal Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Good. Are you still want him? <laughs> You're supposed to give them a demonstration of being yeah. responsible and like not good enough. That I'm going to wait for the right one. <laughs> Carry on. He's a great puppy. You did both. You you held him up high from under the chest. Same okay. thing, really. Yeah, okay. yeah I. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just yeah. read it wrong. Yeah. I told you to flip them over, but yeah, yeah. yeah. no, there's both. You elevate, yeah. and that's you know uh, holding under the belly, yeah. and then you also did the flip over, which is the more dominance test. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? This is good stuff, huh? Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, what I didn't show them was more close-ups of the threes.
because you guys can get this online, so you don't need to know every detail. But if you think back to like the very first test, when it was, you know, does the puppy come readily tail up, um, you know, jumping, biting at hands, does it come readily tail up, pawing or licking? These are very specific, you see. So as she was watching and observing the behavior, she could say it came readily with the tail down or it came hesitant with the tail down or it would not come at all. Um, so, you know, these were very specific and she just gets to sort of watch the behavior, the first reaction of the dog, run it through this filter and then choose the closest uh, aligned option that's provided. And that is where that number comes from, okay? Yeah. So if you're looking at the social stuff, right, ones and twos, they categorize as a more dominant dog. That's where they're looking at the dogs willing to jump on you, bite you, get underfoot. Like that's where they're categorizing that dog's gonna be more naturally dominant versus a three is a nice, well-rounded, high pack drive, but, but eager to follow, not get underfoot and try to lead, mm -hmm. right? So that is what Nux did. Mm -hmm. He just followed. Yeah, yeah. He has very high pack drive. We've noted that several times. He, you know, you let him outside with the pack and there'd be lots of dogs and he'd be going to the doors. Yeah. He's already doing things like that. He wants to be with people and he likes to be with his people. Um, do you ever retest this after some training has been done? You can. You're not going to change the inherent core of the dog. I mean, I'd say go look at the post that I did with Finn. Like, if mm -hmm. any of you met Finn, you would be like, oh, he's not fives and sixes, but if you put him in a massively stressful situation, he still is. Mm -hmm. He's just very different when he has the right formula to be totally. confident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Great question coming from Jenna. John and I have a tendency to love maple style or type dogs. Brittany's, cattle dogs, huskies, working dogs. If we use this test when we choose our next dog a long time from now, emphasis on my emphasis on long, is that a smarter way to go about getting a working dog with more of a companionship family lifestyle? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you'd also, I would say, look at show lines because show yes. lines um, more stability. breed out drive, essentially, yeah. because they don't want dogs losing their marbles in the show ring. So if you find a breeder that breeds show lines versus working dogs, that's just automatically going to make it easier for you. And then absolutely do this test. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, as it says, you do it at seven weeks. So ideally, well, like what Cam did with Lazo, who's a little older still technically, but mm -hmm. the first time she met him, she was me and I was Elias, right? So she didn't even handle him until I had done the handling and the test. So. That's something the breeder, a good breeder, should be willing to let you do that. Mm -hmm. Come in even before you take them home at mm -hmm. seven weeks um, and literally run the test yourselves. And, and of course, you can do multiple. I'm going to say not should, must. A good breeder must be the kind of person and breeder and advocate for their breed that they've either already done this and they are all about it. They're educated and they understand this about development and rearing and whelping. Um, or you're coming along and saying like I did, I want this information and I have a formula of scores that I have in my mind that I want in this dog and I'm not taking the dog if it doesn't fit in that formula. And they will say to you, absolutely, we're thrilled to know you're that committed of an owner and that you want to be that intentional about the match. And if you are in any way bumping up against a limiter to be able to do that, that ain't your breeder. That's just not your breeder, guys. You've got to raise the bar. We have to have higher standards when it comes to where we source our dogs from. And the people who really care about this, um, you know, the preservation of good dogs and healthy lines, they are on board for these things. They understand and respect the impact and importance of getting these tests done and matching dogs according to the lifestyle and the, and the handler ability and the, um, you know, comfort level of raising that dog to be its best self. They really, they, they, they just do. So it's, it's like, it should be an emphasis on you can and must get these things if we're ta calling this person a, a reputable breeder. And with my breeder, uh, for Laszlo, um, she'd been traveling to a show for another breeding, as, I think it was actually for another breeding, at 49 days. And so when, I, when we connected and, and it was one week late, and I'm finding out she has this puppy that just might be the one, she had actually said, normally I would do that. I was gone during the time that that temperament test window would have been completed. 
And so it was very much like, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yes, I'm, I would love to have that done. Yes, you can do it. It just happened to be a, an issue of logistics that she was out of town. So that can happen. Um, but, you know, there's an experienced person is going to find a way and make sure that that is scheduled on time and it happens. And they're even looking at these things much earlier. A couple of my friends who are in breeding, uh, not in breeding, but who are in the breeding world, um, you know, are, are looking at these uh, handling um, you know, tests and taking these assessments and sort of making notes about these puppies all along the way. They're not even waiting to 49 days. They're doing this sort of all along the way and then they'll do it officially and record it and be able to tell a buyer, here's what we've got in this dog. I mean, a really good breeder <laughs> should be able to say, what is your lifestyle? Yeah. Oh good, this dog was mostly threes. Yeah. And here you go. And you can't have that one. <laughs> You may not, you're attracted to that one? No, you may not have that one. That one needs a dog trainer <laughs> or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or just a second time owner. I mean, yeah, or totally. I think that's what Riley's uh, breeders did. Mm. They told me which dog was right for us when we got it. Nice. Her. Cool. And they said that they temperament tested her. I don't know if they used. I mean, this specific one. Yeah. yeah. So. It is by far the most widely accepted, but there are other yeah. ones. So. Cool. Yep, yep, yep. Awesome. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Thanks, guys. Anything else you can think of that we left out for the people? Knox is cute. He's really great. Yeah, Jen, it's probably the one you would fall in love with. I mean, this is <laughs> this is also why um, I didn't handle Laszlo. And, and I, I mean, I really can't say like I, it wasn't good enough, so I walked <laughs> away. I don't have that story because he tested out <laughs> to a level that is the numbers that I was aiming for. It had to be at least that. It couldn't be hard in, a, in one direction or the other. Um, but that was, that was literally the boundary was, I'm not touching it, I'm not falling for it, I'm not getting attached to it. If it doesn't test out the way I need it to, we're leaving, you touch it. <laughs> so, so they handed, the breeder was like, you want it? Nope, give it to her, give it to her because I'm not taking it out of here if it doesn't come out with the right numbers. So you do have to be prepared um, you know, to know your limits, know where you struggle, be honest with your breeder, you know, dude, I'm going to fall in love with whatever one of these little fluffer nutters you put in front of me. So please test it out and tell me what I'm working with before I walk into that pack and meet your babies. Like, just be honest, just know that it's okay. But you know, have, have the, the tools around your process of selection and decision-making so that you don't screw yourself over on impulse, right? It's easy to do. All right, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, get yourself to volhard.com. I linked it for you. It's in the description. And check it out. And then, you know, gosh, it sure would love to hear from you guys. Come on back and comment. Tell us what you found. A lot of you are fostering puppies. You are training puppies. Um, I saw Francis saying, I'm going to start doing this in evaluations and assessments. That is cool. That would be amazing. Um, get over there, get the information, get educated, and if you need help learning how to research, I have a program for that. <laughs> Jenna is in charge of it. Um, so we'll be happy to help. If you have more questions on this stuff, just drop them in the comments. Yeah, just drop them in the comments and we'll answer back as we're able or create more content for you, okay? Happy testing. Bye. Mm -hmm.